Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at none other than more figures from the classic mighty superhero line by Ace Toys. They have shown a lot of commitment to this line and fingers crossed they keep it going. But before we get talking about the figures themselves, I do want to let you know these aren't counterfeit items. They are however third party unlicensed products. That means that the company Ace Toys doesn't hold the intellectual property rights to put any of the Mighty Morphin branding on the box and they definitely haven't done that. That's why all of the names and all of the logos are pretty generic. Also, if you are looking to pick them up, just so you know, I purchased my particular copies from ToysWonderland.com. As I said, these are items that I purchased with my own money. This isn't a promotional video, it's just a review of a product that's readily available on the open market. Now, with all of that out of the way, if you do want to see more Ace Toys products and also really early hot toys third party and a bunch more videos and reviews why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. Now for those of you who are maybe uninitiated in the world of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and you might be thinking Justin isn't that the Green Ranger's armor that goes on the Red Ranger and Black Ranger sometimes? Yeah you're kind of right. Sometimes Tommy the Green Ranger decides to give away his abilities and sometimes permanently and that's what he did with the Red Ranger later on in this series. Of course he then got his powers back as the White Ranger but nevertheless these were some pretty darn awesome looks and some figures of these have actually already existed on the market in various different scales but never in one sixth. So without further ado what we're gonna do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for both the Dragon Shield variant of the Red Ranger and the Black Ranger as well. Now as you can see they're pretty much identical between the two of them except obviously this one's red and this one's black. Pretty darn straightforward but nevertheless let's take a look at Red Ranger first. As you can see Dragon Shield on top, red down below, golden red hero. They've had a bit of a text mix up here though unlike the Black Ranger which luckily is perfectly fine but nevertheless I'm sure that's not going to affect the figure inside and speaking of the figure inside here he is and damn doesn't that red and that gold combo look very very striking I can't wait to add this guy to the Power Rangers shelf it adds just a little bit of flair to the already badass Red Ranger this looks stunning. Now he also does come with a bunch of accessories which we'll be taking a much closer look at in just a second. Now popping him out of the way so we can of course unbox Zack with the dragon shield as well. The episode in where he gets this dragon shield is the one where he's fighting this clam monster creature and Tommy does give him the shield to apparently heal him. I don't know how exactly that works but nevertheless he does wear the shield. You'll also notice that he doesn't come with the dragon dagger because he doesn't use it whereas Jason actually gets the Green Ranger power going forward. Zack just gets this more as a one-off treatment, but I have to say that black and gold combo is incredibly striking. Now fingers crossed Ace Toys do continue making even more Rangers. Let them know down in the comments below if you do want to see a 1995 movie armored suit variant. I would love to see that. So definitely show them some love down in the comments below. Now what we're going to do next is get all of the accessories for both releases laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything they come with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with both the armored red and armored black Rangers. Now as you can can see there is one clear discrepancy between the two and that is of course Tommy's Dragon Dagger. You only get it with the Red Ranger and that makes sense. The one time that the Black Ranger used the Dragon Shield he never got to make use of the Dragon Dagger itself. That was still with Tommy so this works perfectly fine. It is really nicely done all the way down to the texture around the actual Dragon Coin itself. It looks beautiful. The gold paint app is crisp and clean and so too is the silver and green. This thing is an absolute treat and I'm very glad that we did in fact get it. Now he also does come with his power sword which looks really darn good. Very nicely painted throughout all the way down to the black wash inside the little detail on the blade there and of course the T-Rex power coin. This thing is also really really nicely done. I actually don't know if they could even do any better even if they wanted to because that piece is pretty much in my opinion one 
6 scale Power Rangers perfection, so too is the Blade Blaster, both in its blaster and folded up configuration. All the paint apps that are supposed to be there are present, except for of course the little writings that are on the Blade Blaster itself. They kinda couldn't do that for copyright reasons, also I'm pretty sure the eyes are supposed to be yellow. If that's the only thing they missed, then I'm gonna be perfectly happy with that. In fact, I actually don't know why they didn't go ahead and make a Blade configuration version. Hopefully if we do get any more of these Mighty Morphin Rangers, they do a Blade version because they did use that sometimes in the show. Now we also do get the usual array of hands, except this time with the Red Ranger, we are getting the Dragon Dagger playing hand, and this is a good thing to have, because of course he did use it and summon the Dragon Zord. The only real complaint that I do have is we only get one of this sort of T-Rex style pose hands. I kind of want one for both sides, because he kind of did that in the show. Nevertheless, I'm still glad that we are getting one. Now I just want to quickly discuss a bit of an upgrade, if you will, that I've decided to investigate, and it's this. This right here is the Legacy Mask from the Legacy Mask set by Bandai. It's a 1-6 scale Red Ranger helmet, but as you can see, I do think it's a little bit more accurate. This one on the right here is the Ace Toys one. Don't get me wrong, if I hadn't seen this, this would have been perfectly serviceable. Still a really nice, glossy, well-painted piece. But then again, comparing it to the Bandai one, I do think the shape is slightly more accurate, all the way down to the sort of love heart effect of the vibe. I do think that's slightly more accurate, so I will be seeing if I can find a way to connect it to the neck peg. I don't know how to do that. Let me know if you have any ideas down in the comments below. Now for the Black Ranger, you pretty much get everything that we got with the red, except for that Dragon Dagger. We also do get the Power Axe, and it does have the same exact gimmick, where you can slide this piece down and make it the little blaster configuration. That is a lot stiffer than the one that came on my regular Black Ranger. So I'm definitely going to be using this, probably with him, because I currently have mine displayed with the Power Axe. It's painted nicely all the way down to the gold little stripes in there, and also the Mastodon coin there looks really darn good. You can tell exactly what that's supposed to be. He also does come with both versions of the Blade Blaster, and for some reason he comes with the Dragon Dagger Flute Playing Hand. I'm actually wondering now if I can maybe heat this up and mold it to look like this one right here. That's something that I'm going to try and I'll let you know down in the comments below if that has actually worked. Now also taking a look at the comparison between the helmets, here we have the black. I actually do prefer the Ace Toys one, I don't know which one is more accurate. I like the line work a little bit better on the Legacy one, but then again, this one, the one from Ace Toys, is not all that bad. I prefer it being a little bit wider. Let me know down in the comments below which of the two is more accurate accurate. Nevertheless, with all of that out of the way, what we're going to do now is get the rangers themselves out here and take a closer look. And here we have the Armored Red Ranger himself standing straight up and down the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, this guy right here looks like an absolute badass. I love it. The addition of the dragon shield over the top of an already awesome outfit, being of course the super iconic Red Ranger, just makes it pop. The color is nice and vibrant on the suit and also on the dragon shield. Everything is nicely painted, everything is nicely detailed. Also. I love the subtle sheen on the outfit. Very show accurate, maybe a little bit too bright, but nevertheless, it does pop on the shelf, especially alongside all of the other Rangers. Now, the way this review is going to work is we're going to take a look at Jason as he is, then zoom in, look at the details, take a look at Zack on the turntable, do the same thing, then move on to the comparisons. So kind of the usual review format. It might be a little bit quicker because we've already, as I said at the intro, taken a look at both of these guys, but Nevertheless, what we're going to do now is take Jason off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. And here we have the Armored Red Ranger himself up close and personal. And I have to say, and I know a couple of people out there might agree with me, the red and gold combo is a one-two punch of awesomeness. I love the way this thing looks in hand. Now, let's start off by talking about the helmet first. Yes, there are some inaccuracies, as I pointed out comparing it to the Legacy helmet, but if you hadn't already seen that, this is a pretty darn good representation. I like the black panel lining, it looks really good and very hard to achieve at 1-6 scale. They missed it on the teeth unfortunately, but that's something I'm willing to forgive because they are incredibly small. The gloss on the black visor is beautiful. The helmet 
helmet itself, as you can see, is fairly glossy. It's reflecting my hand in there, but I have seen a chap out in the community use some car polish to polish it up even further. I might actually try that on my own figures, and I'll let you know how that goes. Now, moving down to the big honkin' dragon shield. We've already seen this on the Green Ranger, but in that meantime, between that review and this one, I've done some research, and I'll have to say there are some inaccuracies on this shield right here. Shape of the diamond, it's a little bit too big, and the black section, in my opinion, a little bit too large as well. These pieces also a little bit too chunky. The overall thing happens to be rather wide, and the slope down, I think, is slightly too exaggerated, but... I'm willing to forgive all of that, in my personal opinion, and by the way, you don't have to agree with me, and you don't have to forgive the inaccuracies of this shield, but I do, because this is kind of the only way to get a 1-6 scale Red Ranger with Dragon Shield, unless you go the full custom route, so that minor inaccuracy on some of the bits and pieces, I'm personally willing to forgive. Now, you can see the bands down here are a slightly different colour to the top part. They actually do match these bands, which I'm perfectly fine with. They're in very close proximity, so it's a nice sort of cohesive look between those two pieces. Now, the gauntlets themselves, in fact, the entire glove and gauntlet section is very nicely weathered. In the show, they weren't pristine, so this definitely makes sense. Kind of does match the Japanese footage, which I do really like. And let's be honest, the USA footage, kind of, they were a bit dirty as well. I don't know if I've actually mentioned this in my other range of videos, but the diamonds are actually sculpted in. So they definitely haven't cheaped out and just painted on a sort of red section over the top of a white tube. They have done some actual sculpting work, and it looks really good. So too does the Morpher. It does unfortunately say Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. Rangers. I know I said unfortunately, but that's kind of cool. It would have been nice though to see the Power Rangers just text on there like we saw on the actual USA Morphers, or in fact the writings that it said on the Japanese one, that would have been fine as well. Also, I do believe this Morpher is supposed to be gold. They got that wrong on the Green Ranger, but then again, I actually do believe that's something I can fix. At the very least, the T-Rex coin is represented there, and it looks fantastic. So too does the rest of the belt with the black lines. They are missing though on the holster. But again, I will forgive that. They do have the stitching there, which kind of makes up for the lack of the black lines. Now you can see, unlike the regular Red Ranger, he does have the dragon dagger hanging on this side of the belt. Panging the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit on Red Ranger. Not a hell of a lot to look at here, aside from some red spandex. I do like the subtle sheen throughout the entire outfit. Very show accurate. The color, however, is a little bit too bright. It should be slightly darker. But still, I'm not going to take any points off for that. It looks fantastic. Material choice as well is on point. Now, just like we saw with the White Ranger, there is some padding over the kneecap here and you can kind of see it, but then again, you can kind of pose it away. When you bend it, it just looks like a knee, so that works for me. The entire leg, in fact, feels slightly padded. I don't know if they've gone ahead and done that to make it look like that sort of more Japanese style, not as muscular as Austin St. John in the suit. He was a bit of a tank, and I do actually prefer the way they've done this, rather than using an over muscular body. Now just like on the gauntlets you can see the diamonds are sculpted in, they are fairly accurate to the shoes in the show all the way down to the black soles and of course they are very nicely weathered. And here we have the armored black ranger himself standing straight up and down the light box just like we've already done with the red ranger and I have to say this thing looks fantastic. We may have only just seen him in that one episode fighting that horrible clam monster or oyster or whatever that thing was, but I have to say this is beautiful. I love the pop of gold on top of the black. The two super contrasting colors look amazing in person, and also having the eyes on the Mastodon helmet be painted in a very similar gold ties it all together. There's only one thing that's missing the gold treatment, just like we said with the Red Ranger, and that is the Morpher. I couldn't quite catch in the show if his Morpher was gold as well. Potentially, it's a really old clip and it's a really old show, so the resolution isn't the greatest. You'll have to let me know down in the comments below. Now, to today, this is the only variation of the Black Ranger that we can actually get in the Lightning Collection, so I'm really glad now that I can have a proper blown-up version to have in the 1-6 shelf, because it kind of was sorely missing him, because as I said, this look is incredibly badass for Zack. Now, what we're going to do next is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look 
at the details. And here we have the armored Black Ranger up close and personal. And I have to say, this guy, just like the Red Ranger, is an absolute feast for the eyes. That might be one of my new sayings, because I've been using it a lot recently, and I have every right to do so, because all of the figures that we've been using it on are really just that. They look fantastic, and so too does this guy right here. Now, we're not going to focus too much on the Dragon Shield. Let's talk about the helmet on the Black Ranger. It's slightly more glossy all around than the Red Ranger, and it's missing even less panel lining just the one strip around the bottom there which I do believe is supposed to be there but overall I do believe the helmet slightly more accurate and I really do like the way it looks this one I have far fewer issues with and as I said it looks fantastic the gloss as well really nicely done now the outfit also I'm not sure if you can tell on camera but it has a sheen just like the Red Ranger in fact all of the outfits do for all of the Rangers and I love it it adds an extra pop over and above just the general color palette especially on the Black Ranger being more of a darker color, having that subtle sheen really brings the entire thing to life. When the light catches it just right, it looks darn beautiful. And of course, I know I said I was going to mention it, but the Dragon Shield looks good as well. Unfortunately, mine has a few scuffs on it fresh out of the box. I'm sure not everyone will have that issue. In fact, my Red Ranger one was completely clean, and so too was my green one. Just the black one. It's a little bit unfortunate, but then again, the props in the show weren't all that well taken care of, so I can kind of write it off as it being a little bit more show accurate. I know I've made a lot of excuses for the figures throughout the course of this video, but I really do like them. I can't help myself. They look so darn good. Now, I don't know, again, if this is supposed to be gold. If it is, then I guess they've made a bit of a boo-boo, but nevertheless, it can be fixed. Macedon coin there, front and center, looks absolutely gorgeous. In fact, the entire upper torso of this guy, super well done. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit on Black Ranger. Now, as you can see, pretty straightforward yet again, just like we saw on Red there, just some black spandex, but that sheen is visible and it looks so darn good. The sort of padding issue isn't as visible on the Black Ranger, a little bit more well hidden and I'm perfectly fine with that, although I never really had a huge issue with the padding there at all. I'd rather some padding there than it straight up be an ugly visible joint where it sort of tucks in on the sides there, kind of like I'm doing by pushing it in, which I'll definitely stop, but I have to say I prefer it looking like that. Now again, moving down to the boots, diamonds sculpted in, nicely weathered and painted, in fact the entire thing, all of the the pieces that should be weathered are nicely done. I imagine this looking a hell of a lot worse if they hadn't actually gone ahead and done the weathering. Now one quick note I have to say, the joints on the ankles on these figures are super tight compared to my original Rangers. I don't know if there's a running change that they've been making in the later batches to improve the feet, but I have to say these, as you can tell, they aren't really moving unless I really want them to do so. That is a huge plus. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have both the Armored Red and Armored Black Rangers standing alongside the less powered up version of the Green Ranger. So basically to achieve this look, I kind of had to break a piece on the Green Ranger to remove the Dragon Shield, but nevertheless that piece can actually plug back in. Not something that I'd recommend doing unless you really wanted to create this powered down look for the Green Ranger. So if you do want to do it, please don't blame me if you you happen to break something on your dragon shield. But nevertheless, this looks really darn good. Now I can recreate the moment where Tommy lost some of his abilities to give it to Jason, or in fact when he willingly sacrificed his own powers to give to Zack. Really powerful moments in the show, and now as I said, I can recreate it in figure form. But as you can see, they're all pretty much the same height. In fact, they are using the underlying exact same body, which is perfectly fine for me. Not too muscular, not too big, not too tall. And this, in my opinion, looks absolutely awesome. I cannot wait to put these guys on the shelf. Just going over articulation on the Red Armored Ranger. Now bear in mind this is going to kind of be for both this guy and the Black Ranger. Anything this guy can do, he can do as well. So I won't really need to go over both. Now also bear in mind this is my personal copy. I paid for it with my own money so I'm going to be potentially a little bit more careful. When you get yours in hand I'm sure you can push the joints a little bit further than I'm willing to go. Now starting off with the helmet itself. First of all I do suggest doing all the rest of the body in terms of your pose dialing 
wheeling it in, then doing the helmet, because it is rather heavy and it does tend to flop. So do be careful. If you want to get your pose just right, as I said, do the rest of the body first. Now, the helmet itself does have an absolutely enormous range of motion, more than enough in my personal opinion. Now, the arms themselves, yes, they will be hindered by the dragon shield going both up and also forward, but mainly forward. It's a big honking piece on the front there. You will have to sort of work with it to get him into his classic ranger style poses. He does have a butterfly joint up here at the shoulder and also a upper bicep swivel. This piece can be moved up so when you are articulating the double bend at the elbow there it pretty much gets out of the way. Of course down at the wrist you do have a traditional 1-6 scale joint. Now for the rest of the body it will be again kind of hindered by the dragon shield. This point will tuck in so you don't actually have to worry about it too much and of course going back is perfectly fine. So too is swiveling and pivot side to side. The legs themselves go pretty much unrestricted all the way up. Same thing without. Swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee which is rather stiff and also down at the feet here a traditional 1-6 scale joint. Someone did ask me that with posing will this crease up? Luckily it's a very stretchy spandex style material so I'm pretty sure you can go crazy with your poses on these Ace Toys ranges and really not have any issues. Just wrapping up on the Armoured Red and Armoured Black Rangers. I have to say, these two figures, I know they don't come as a set, but you kind of, in my opinion, have to buy them hand in hand because they are both armoured versions of classic MMPR characters. And I have to say, having them in hand, I'm in love. These two things are awesome. I kind of really do like the red with the armoured dragon shield over and above the original red, and I know that's sacrilege to say, but having it in hand specifically posed up with the armoured down green ranger, it looks straight up naughty, and I love it. This is such a fantastic display option. You can kind of do the same thing though with the Black Ranger. They both look equally as fantastic as one another. Now I know these aren't the real super iconic looks of either of the two characters. The standard MMPR variants are probably the ones that most people are going to go for, but at the very least, I am so glad that Ace Toys went ahead and made these guys. Fingers crossed that an armored pink isn't too far off because as I said, a little bit earlier in the video, she did wear the dragon shield in the Boom Studios comics, so it does make sense for them to do it now that they're dipping in to Boom Studios characters. We will potentially, and in fact it's kind of confirmed now, be getting a Lord Dracon, so fingers crossed they keep on going. Ranger Slayer anyone? I have my fingers and toes crossed. Hopefully Zeo Rangers in space and 1995 movie Rangers aren't too far behind. Those are definitely all on my list. Also, a two-pack of putties I don't think would go astray either. That would be fantastic. Imagine having your 1-6 scale rangers fighting alongside, or I should say fighting with, some of those awful nasty putties in your display. That would be another fantastic display option in my personal opinion. Now let me know which of the two, Armored Red or Armored Black, you do prefer. And in fact, if you are going for either of the two, because they are a little bit more obscure, but I personally still absolutely love them. Now, as I said at the start of this video, these are third-party products and they are unlicensed. That means the company Ace Toys doesn't hold the intellectual property rights to make these figures. But with all of that out of the way, I still really do like them. I know I've made a couple of excuses for inaccuracies, but then again, this is Ace Toys' first attempt at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers figures, especially in 1-6 scale. It's kind of never been done before, uncharted waters if you will, so I'm willing to let a few things slide. If you're a die-hard MMPR fan though, and you're not, that's perfectly fine. You're not obliged to pick these up at all, but just know that I personally still really like them. Also bear in mind, this is not a promotional video. This is a review of a product, or I should say two products, that I picked up with my own money. I have included the link down in the description below to the place that I purchased them if you'd like to just go and have a look. Also, while you're down in the description, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.